Consecrate the place and the day to music and Sicilia. Consecrate, 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 consecrate. Hi, I'm Jolene George. I'm a senior at Oak Harbor High School. And next year, I'll be going to college for theater effects makeup. Mr. McCoy's really inspired me to be a better performer, not just by giving me reasons to be, but he's really provided a safe place for me and all of his other students where we don't really have one, and that allows us to come out of our shells to perform instead of just going through the motions and what we think is acceptable. We can improvise and come up with our own things and be creative when otherwise we would have felt like we had to do what is right and what is told to us instead of coming up with something ourselves. I sing Jesus, Jesus, how I love thee. perform if you feel like you're going to be judged. Being a family really helps, even though we're a dysfunctional family sometimes. It lets us know that it's okay to act crazy. It's okay to do something that's a little cuckoo because everyone else is doing it. And you're not going to be judged, you're going to be accepted, and we can really come up with some amazing performances because we know that even if we come up with something and it doesn't work, it's okay. It's not going to be held against us. McCoy doesn't like to just be a choir teacher, and he's really not. He's a Zen life master coach person. He teaches us the importance of being on time, of being prepared, always having a pencil. He just teaches us all of these little life lessons that really make us better people and better students. So if he's students. starting out super quiet, then he's going to hear the correct one over any mistakes that he makes. And then he knows where he's successful because he can hear the correct way versus, right? So, sophomore year, I went through a really tough time and I made some really, really bad choices. And he sort of made me realize that there were people who cared about me and that it would get better. He gave me a place and something to work for, and that sort of motivated me to not give up. Well, I would have a completely different life without Mr. McCoy. I really don't think I'd fit anywhere, because this is where I fit. This is where I belong. I don't think I'd have that. our job to greet them with a smile so that they can start out their church experience um, knowing that uh, somebody cares that they're there. You can probably tell from my dialect accent that I am from England originally. I'm involved particularly with the ambience and environment of the church, which is uh, dealing with all the liturgical matters pertaining to the different masses and times of the year that we are involved in. And it's my job and my people on the committee, with the guidance of the priest, because I am on the liturgy committee as well, to figure out what, we, what we're going to do. We try to bring in something new. We're doing something new this year, and that is some of the banners that are going up and reflecting the year of faith. I think it's a ministry. Well, it is definitely a ministry, and I, people, the ministry's people do tend to be reflecting whatever their gifts are. Among some of the things that we do and are responsible for, taking care of all the church linens, they, you know, they don't just appear magically, they're done every week by somebody, and I do those, and uh, that involves the ironing, getting the wine stains out, putting them back in the proper place so they're always available for the Eucharistic ministers and the priest. 
we're a learning and teaching and sharing and praying organization. It's a commission versus a committee. We're a group of faith-filled people trying to live the gospel in today's world. What that means is learning about the social issues addressed in our world. It means trying to address our environment and through prayer and action, trying to make a difference. In Matthew, Jesus calls us to feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, care for the ill. Following in the footsteps of Jesus takes our belief in today's world. We research things, bring awareness and prayer to the St. Hubert's community. Some of us actually become active in the outreach programs. Becoming engaged in our faith is a wonderful experience. In the past few years, our group has helped invite St. Hubert parishioners to participate in every ministry through an annual ministry fair. We have so many opportunities to live the gospel. We are so blessed at St. Hubert. The committee uh, meets and discusses where the, the funds that we collect during the year, where they need to be distributed, especially to those who are, who are in dire need. I think the committee members take a great deal with them in the awareness of the need in our small community for help, financially as well as spiritually. The Three Peas program was started by Father Rick to encourage our parish to uh, donate personal products, paper products, and protein products. And so we have taken it on hoping that we can encourage people to help the needy. The involvement with the Three Peas program and the collections is that I think it gives people a feeling of contributing and making them feel that they're getting closer to God. Um, we're a very active organization in the parish. We um, have at least two events a year where we make funds for the parish and for community charities. And we meet every month, and the board also meets every month, and we have a good time. And, <laughs> and uh, at the end of the year, and in the middle of the year, we distribute funds to different charities and the parish as it needs, and we raise thousands of dollars for, for those things. We have a bazaar in October, and we've had that for many years. And um, that involves a lot of the members making things for this event and also others contributing things. And they've been making um, some quilt kind of items and pillows and things made out of fabric, um, like bags. And we have lots and lots of food that parish members will donate. In the past, we've had a fashion show, which was really popular because members of WASH and other people in the parish did the modeling. And, and that was really a lot of fun, too, and it was another, another fundraising event. A lot of our um, expenses are covered by parish members, by members of WASH. Mm. And um, we have a budget for that, and we end up making a fair profit, which is really good for, for the, for the uh, causes that we support. When I arrived at St. Hubert uh, several years ago, uh, my main mission, this is something that I took on myself, was to get the choir to understand the spiritual side of it. And I say to them that this is a ministry. It's not some exclusive club that meets on Thursday night and sings on Sunday morning. And if they don't go away on a Sunday or from a rehearsal, having taken something that's refreshing for the soul, then I need to know about it because I'm missing the mark. Let's get, let's get that, Oh, oh, oh.
important role in the parish of St. Hubert. Uh, first and foremost, it is our responsibility to lead the congregation in its worship. And uh, we, we like to uh, sing hymns that are well known to the congregation, tunes that they will be uh, singing throughout the week when they leave Mass on Sunday. And it is also important that the music we select, the hymns that we select to sing, that they uh, underpin the readings for the day. I work with the religious education program for preschool through fifth grade, and then with the youth ministry program from sixth through twelfth grade. And that's developing faith formation, teaching them our faith, as well as fellowship and and engagement within the parish. Fellowship is very important, especially for our young children and for our youth and our families, as well as the whole parish, because it brings in that element of fun and friendship and a connection and, and the need to be together. Well, when it comes to the multi-generational uh, uh, collaboration, I guess I can only speak on our experiences and that the biggest one that we have here is Vacation Bible School in the summer where all of our volunteers are really a lot of our retired parishioners and the smiles and the wisdom and the joy that they share with the children and in turn the laughter and the hugs and the the overwhelming joy on their face it, it's it's a win-win and a give back to each other approach and and so I think I think that our parish does a really good job at sharing what we each have to offer whether it's the younger or the older with each other when we make it a point to do it. Doubt is the number one way we propel our our faith formation is to explore and question and and really investigate the doubt that the kids have or that our adults have or our families have or our parish has and and how we can overcome that doubt and and why we would want to question and bring up that doubt. The most important contribution you can make, I believe, is, is sharing. Yeah, scared of the dark. I'm not scared. 
Knock it off, guys. She doesn't have to do anything. Sure she does. She doesn't want to be chicken, does she? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has to prove she's not a chicken. It's not like she has Matt to hide behind. John, maybe now's not the best time. Get out of this. Hey, he bumps you around all the time and he just uses you as arm candy. And you know he's cheated on you like millions of times. And worse yet, you keep defending him. Not only does it make you look bad, but it makes all of us look like crap friends. Knock it off, John. She doesn't have to do anything. And let's go home and freezing. John, everything is your fault. All the time. Thank you for that deep insight, Brian, but really now is not the time. Would we just call Matt or her parents? No, no, please don't call Matt or his parents. Please don't. Just shut up and let me drive. John, pull over. Allie? What's wrong? She's dead. She's dead? John, this is all your fault. My fault? You told her to go in there. What? You did too. We were all there. We're going to get in so much trouble. We're not going to get in trouble. Of course we're going to get in trouble. There's a dead body. What are we going to do? We can't just dump her somewhere. She's our friend. All right. Well, I'm not getting in trouble for this. John, maybe she does have a point. Maybe we should call the cops. Uh, why not you two? Look, we can't call the cops. We seriously are going to What is wrong with it? Look, it's not going Guys? to What is it? John, unlock, oh. the, unlock the car. Oh, no. <laughs>
We didn't do the kiss, man. Find out either way. I no, don't really not. care. What? No, are we supposed to just like dump the body here? Like that's Yeah, not... sure, no, whatever works. So... I don't no, care. You're so selfish. We need to take her body to the cops. We need to let her parents know what happened. We're not taking the body anywhere else. I'm not carrying you're... this thing around in my car. Take her for a dip. Go on, Rolando. We should have the oh, whole crew. Just... <laughs> I felt kissed. Too much. Too much. I love you. Wake up, man. There's no school today. Uh, why are you waking me? Just want to let you know before I leave. Don't stay in bed all day. No, not really. It's more like a, a flirt. Yeah, but it's hard to get her attention while there's no schools. 
Nope. But really, can I complain? I mean, it's three day weekend. Look, if you're so worried about it, why don't you just call Mel? Yeah, sure. Um, pick you around 10. Bye. Whoa, whoa, what? Back What's in the on? car. We gotta get to the school. Why? I called Mel and she said police are everywhere. Everything's taped up. Like something's going on. Look, school's canceled. We don't. We don't need to go. I'm, I. School's canceled, so that means I'm not gonna go. Yeah. Well. Fine. Regardless, Mel's over there, and you said we're gonna hang out, and you've got the wheels. Uh, okay. It's just a pickup. No snooping around or anything like that. Okay. Fine. I thought we were supposed to pick you up. I was just, what are you doing, playing detective? No. <laughs> Chill out, <I> Gabe. <laughs> if we're here, we can at least look around. They've got the whole entrance blocked off, so there's not really a whole lot to look at. What are you kids doing around campus? Don't you know there's an investigation going on? School just got canceled without a reason, so we were kind of wondering what was going on. If you don't leave now, then I'm going to have to escort you off the campus. Sir, we don't mean to disturb the investigation. It would just make us a lot more comfortable if we knew what was happening. Look, you guys need to leave right now. I can give you this bit of information, that there was an animal attack on the campus, and the best thing you can do is just leave while animal control deals with the situation. I don't know, man. It just kind of freaks me out that something crazy could just be walking around here. Well, it doesn't matter because, for all well, we know, that cop could be telling us Craig's story. I guess that's a possibility, but I don't really know what else it could be. I guess we won't really know until they tell the public. That's probably right. Seems like it. Hey, Mel, you have the time? Uh, it's three. <sighs> well, I gotta go to my job. I'll take you to Marty's house. Can we do a movie or something tonight? Yeah, we can do that. All right, sounds good. You garbage? Yeah. yeah. Give me some. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Oh. Oh. You got it all over the ground, and the birds are going to come. The no, birds are going to come, and gonna, it's going to be your fault. <laughs> no. I'm going to eat your donut. I'm going to eat all my donuts. <laughs> <laughs> If I like crushed all these, they would turn to dust. Don't, don't do that, don't do that, man. Don't do that. It was so cool. Can you look at that? Oh my god! What's wrong with you? That is grade A snack, right there. Guys. The snacks on full oil. Guys! <laughs> what is that? What? There's something in the bushes. Man, it's coming at us! Oh my god. Oh my god, did you see that thing? It was so big. Look, teeth. look. Oh my god. Maybe, I'm, that was maybe not like normal. A stray dog a or stray something. Dog. What kind of dog looks like that? Okay. I don't know, but still. Maybe Dude. we're just overreacting. Yeah, you're probably right. I don't know. I don't know, man. Let's just go to the movies. Okay, let's go. Ooh. Oh, oh yeah. <clears throat> Good morning. Is that coffee? Oh, <laughs> thanks. 
<sighs> so what are you watching? Just the news. The animal was spotted in the building around 11.15 last night and attacked two employees. The attack alarmed some of the customers inside the building, causing a panic. Current reports state there are three casualties and two injured employees who were rushed ah, to I, I told you, see, nobody ever has control of their animals anymore. I guess now they'll do something about it, but <laughs> still wait for that. Um, I, I gotta go see Mel and, and the others. Mel, open up. Come on, Mel, I need to talk to you. Did you see the news this morning? Dude, dude, it's news. Well, forget about that now. The, the thing last night, I think something bad happened. Do you, do you think Mel knows? I don't know, I, I just woke up. Come on, Mel, pick up. Mel, yeah, did you see the news? Look, we, we gotta check out that thing. Okay, what's going on? Cause if not, no one will. Fine, we'll we'll be, we'll be there in a minute. We gotta go. Come on, we gotta go. So you guys still haven't told me about what's happening, like what's going on. Well, remember last night we got attacked by that thing. Yeah, that super huge dog. Well, this door was just attacked. And you think it's the same thing? It has to be. What else could it have been? So then. What are we doing? It's the same thing that caused the incident at the school. I guess I never thought about that. I want to take a closer look because the police are keeping re this really under wraps for something as simple as a rabid animal attack. Right you are, boy. Sorry to surprise you guys. I'm just dabbing over here where you were saying and I thought I could help you out a little bit. So do you know anything about the dog? I know plenty, starting with the fact that that's no dog you're dealing with. Not a normal one, anyway. So then what is it, some kind of wolf? <laughs> uh, more or less, more so like um, what you call a hellhound. But those don't exist. That's what you think, but those stories gotta come from somewhere, right? Oh, come on, if there's such thing as these mystical creatures, wouldn't we have proof by now? Well, before you go assuming so much, think about what it is. It's a large black dog, glowing red eyes, sharp teeth. Not that different from your standard dog. I'd say it's pretty likely they could blend in without you noticing. So what's it doing here then? Well, the devil occasionally likes to send up a few minions, demons, and hellhounds as well to just kind of mess with society. So that's basically what's going on right now. Um, well, we were here last night and we were just eating outside the car and out of nowhere we just see it coming out of the bushes and we got in the car as fast as we could so we didn't really get a clear shot of what it was. You guys better stick with me. I'm the only one who can take care of these things. Well, where are we going? Well, I got a storage unit I used to keep all my hunting equipment in. We can go there and pack up and get ready to go. So what are we going to do? Like, kill it? Trap it? or do some Christian voodoo to send it back to hell? Well, I wouldn't be doing all this business if I didn't get to kill something. <sighs> Unfortunately, being immortal creatures, it's gonna take a bit more than just your standard, you know, wooden state to kill these things. Come on, let's get going. Wow, looks like there's a lot of crap in here. Hey, watch what you say. I'll probably take a head off with this and about half the other crap I got in here. Is this all hellhound hunting gear? Not necessarily. That's a coking gun, but I keep about half the other crap I have in here as well as just general stuff. <laughs> so which one of these brooms will kill this thing? <laughs> I didn't realize you were funny. If you put this down, I'll show you what we really got. This is a little thing I've been working on for about two weeks. It's a prototype, so it's not the best, but it's gonna do just fine. It's a power washer that's been modified to work on the go, and it's got a tank here for holy water that we'll really use to spray this baddie down. Sounds pretty sick. Oh, it's gonna be. So what are we gonna do? Well, I wasn't really prepared for a team mission, so um, I'm not entirely sure. I could really use a distraction to get this thing pumping. So you're just gonna throw us out as bait? That sounds a little risky. I'll give you guys something to defend yourselves, don't worry. 
I'm look if we're gonna do this we need to get going it's not much daylight left and I know where this thing is I've been tracking it for a bit and we're gonna find it and we're gonna kill it and I'm gonna need your guys' help Well, it's somewhere here in this forest area. Here, take this, it's home. I've been leaving traps here for about a, a month or so. Just big slabs of meat outs, uh, or maybe some roadkill. So it knows where food is, so it will always come back here. This is where it nests. So what are, what are we waiting for? Why don't we just run in when it comes back and kill it? Well, we can't just run in and kill it. That's reckless. This is a killer beast, and it will bite at your throat the second it gets a chance. What we need to do is we need to out hunt it. We need to sneak up and get it right when it's not expecting. The sun is out, so we have the advantage. It's a lot weaker, but don't make the mistake of thinking that that gives us a huge advantage. We need to take every little advantage we get because this thing will kill us the second it gets our scent. But the woods, there's so much of it here. How are we supposed to know where to look? Well, we have this. Now this is a Geiger counter. What it does is it picks up on radioactive waves given up by different nuclear objects or whatever really. Fortunately for us, the Hellhound also gives off a kind of spiritual aura that's picked up by the Geiger counter. So we can use that to track it. If we have this starting point now, we know it was here. This is where I had a huge slab of meat just this morning. I put it out and now it's gone. The beast is here, it's nearby. This is fresh blood. Yeah. This looks like a good place to stop. Wait a second. These readings are going crazy. Oh, that means it's really close here. Turn this off. We don't want to give away any position anymore. Well, I mean, I have armor. I can go check it out. Yeah, maybe so. Just be careful. Here, um, Gabe, hand her that bat in case of anything. And we'll set up here and we got to be aware, but why don't you put that on and just hope nothing bad happens. You think I can use this? Maybe. I mean, you're not going to be able to kill anything with that. No, supernatural anyway. You can use it probably to defend yourself or hey, something. Come on, look at it. It looks sick. You know, I don't know. That's like stick my bust so you can try something. Fair enough. What happened? Oh, man. Oh. This is really fresh. It's nearby. God, where's Marty? Play dead. 